Uh, from my introduction, you said that the Muslims believe that God is uh, is unlike anything here in the world. He is not like a human being, a dog, an animal, and everything. But I, uh, in my Bible, in Genesis 1, I don't know which face it is. It is said that God said that, let us create him, and, and he is going to have my structures. He is going to be like me. And I want to ask... Uh, how can you say that God is unlike anything here in this world? Very good question. Very good question. Did you hear the question? Yes. Uh, no. You see, the question was that I had said at the beginning of my talk that God is not like anything we can think or imagine. He's not like a man. He's not like a monkey. He's not like an elephant. He's not like a snake. He's not like anything we can think or imagine. He is a spiritual being. But now, the young lady points out that in the Christian Bible, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, we are told that God was speaking to somebody else, and he was saying, let us create man in our image. Is that you have in mind? See? Let us create man in our image, somebody like us. And if this is the image, if this is the image of God, you, me, everybody, that means God is also like you and me. That's a logic. That's a logic of our question. Very logical. If man is created in the image of God, and if the image is this, what we see, then God must be also like a man, a glorified man. We are all glorified monkeys. All. Some look like chimpanzees. Some look, look like baboons, some look like gorillas, but we are more glorified than the chimpanzee, the baboon, and the gorilla. Am I right? We are all glorified monkeys. We are all. So God will be more glorified than us, more handsome than us. That's the only thing we can give him credit. That if we look like chimpanzees and baboons and gorillas, then he must be, you know, something more handsome. He says, no. You see, this is the misconception. You see, this book, the Holy Bible, this book is a Jewish book. 4,000 years old. The Bible is a Jewish book. And the Jewish language, like other Eastern languages, is full of metaphors and similes. You know, you say something, but you don't mean that literally. Like a person who's behaving bad, you know, immoral. We say he's a swine. Have you heard that before? You say he's a swine. What do you mean when you say he's a swine? Does he look like a pig? Does he grunt like a pig? Can you make bacon or ham out of him? Can you? No. Then what do you mean you say he's a swine? You don't say he's like a swine. You say he's a swine. Agun Jalo? So we say no. We are talking about the qualities of that person, his behavior. We're not talking about his looks. He may be very handsome. Like the most handsome stars we see on the films. But we still say he's a swine. See, this is what is called figure of speech. So God Almighty, when he's talking, creating man in his image, it is not this image. You see, this image is the image of a monkey. Yours and mine, all of us. So if God is like us, creates problems. You see, it creates problems. If God is like us, then he has a mouth. You'll have to agree. He has a mouth. And he spoke. He said, let there be light. I'm reading the Bible. It says that, let there be light, and there was light. You believe that? I believe that. He said means he willed it. But now, if he said with his mouth, let there be light. So he's got a mouth, so he spoke. So the Christian says, yes. He spoke. With his mouth, he said, yes. He spoke those words, he said, yes. So I said, now, has he got teeth? Teeth, teeth. I'm a zinyo. He's zinyo. He's zinyo. Has he got teeth? What would you say? Yes. If he's got a mouth and no teeth, then he'll be blood, 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 and he'll be like, You think God speaks like that? You can speak better than him? Me? I can speak better than him? And he's a blood, 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 and he'll be like, No. He said that he had teeth. Then I said, He's got tongue? Yes. Yes. Then he's got larynx and lung. 
He said, yes. And he's speaking, he's talking, talking, talking. It's the sun, moon, stars, you know, monkey, elephant, nay, they, that, millions and millions of words he utters for his creation. So his mouth goes dry, mine is going dry, but I'm fasting, so I can't, according to my system, this is a fasting month, we don't drink or we don't eat. But now, God Almighty talking, 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 so his mouth goes dry, so he must lubricate it. What he must take? Some liquid? No. Yes, stands to reason. If this is this mouth, this mouth, you keep on using it, it can't use, keep on using it endlessly, it must dry up. The saliva dries up, you must replenish it. So he takes a drink, and if he takes a drink, then there must be an outlet as well. No. Where you get your thunderstorms from? From the heavens. Where, where did they come about? So now you see, your mind starts working. So God like that? So no. God is not like that. You see, this in the image of God means in our qualities we are like God. That the qualities that he, God has given man, God is holy. You can be holy. God is just. You can be just. God is merciful. You can be merciful. In our qualities, we are all like God. We have those godly qualities if we will use them. If you want to use devilish qualities, you can use them. But in our qualities, we are created in that image. Not this physical image. But now, since the, the Western world, they have no idea about the language of the Jew. They understood literally what was metaphorical to the Jew became literal to the Greek, because the Greek were the first people to receive this message of Jesus Christ. The first people to receive the message, besides the Jews, were the Romans and the Greeks. And the Romans and the Greeks, they had the man-gods beyond counting. I don't know if you heard the name, Jupiter. Jupiter is the god of heaven. Pluto, the god of hell. These are fairy tales. But in the Greek mythology, they believed that there was Jupiter, who was the god of heaven, Pluto was the god of hell. Vulcan was the god of fire. Mars was the god of war. You heard these names? Mars, Mars, M-A-R-S, Mars was the god of war. Neptune was the god of the sea. Zeus was the father of all these gods with his many wives and many children. He was sitting on some planet and he was sending his sons into the world. His Hercules, his Apollo, and his Horus, and his Isis, and his Osiris. These are all fairy tales. You see, but the people who believe in fairy tales, fairy tales are not fairy tales. They are realities. So what was metaphorical to the Jew became literal to the Greek, and the Greeks were the pioneers of that message of the Bible to the rest of the world. So you, the African, and the Indian Christian, and the European Christian, all the Christians of the world are made to look at a Jewish book. This Bible is a Jewish book, and they're made to look at it through Greek glasses, as the Greeks saw it. So therefore, all this problem. So today, the world is going to atheism. Atheism means people who don't believe in God. In the West, Russia was once a mighty Christian nation. I don't know whether you know. Russia was one of the mightiest Christian nations on earth. Today, they are all not only communists, but they are atheists. They don't believe in God at all. France was once called the proud daughter of the Church of Rome, but is going atheistic. Italy, the home of Roman Catholicism, is becoming atheistic. People who don't believe in God. What makes them so? It is the concept. There is God, but the concept, if you think he's like a man, finish. You bring him down to your level. You think he's like a monkey? My ancestors. They believe that he was like a monkey. He's like an elephant. He's like a snake. My ancestors. We're Hindus. We believed in all these gods. Man gods, women gods, animal gods. You see, so once you have that type of concept, your own standards go down and you become atheistic. Sooner or later, you will, the more education you get, the more atheistic you'll become. So there is no such thing as a physical image that God is like a man or like a monkey. The Bible says God is spirit. I'm now quoting the New Testament. We are told that God is spirit and those that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit, not in form, shape or size, but spiritually. Because this form, once you think he's like a man, then when you're worshiping him, you're doing idol worship. It's an idol worship. When you think of God like a man, whether like Jesus or like Muhammad or like Moses or like, like an elephant, 
anything that you have, a mental image or one outside, it is idol worship. And we are not to worship our own images, our own imagination. Any other question? <laughs>